Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I've got my man Brad Gilbert here today, and we're going to be talking about U.S. men's tennis. What's going on? Stay tuned. All right, guys, Brad Gilbert in the house. Thank you for joining me, BG. Nice to be here. We're in front of BG Nation, too. <laughs> That's right. So we're in the parking lot here. Um, so the reason I asked Brad to join me today is we all know Brad as the player. We all know Brad as Andre's coach. But there's something that a lot of us forget. Brad, who was the last... American number one? It's been 20 years. I had hair. I'm completely <laughs> bald. But the last number one was Andy Roddick in 2003. He was the last American to win a slam, the 2003 U.S. Open. Andre had won a slam um, at the start of 2003. So we had, uh, he won the Aussie Open in 2003. So we had two slam winners in 2003. And now it's been 20 years. Okay, so who was uh, Andy Roddick's coach? Uh, me. <laughs> uh, yeah, BG was the last U.S. American coach who coached a number one and the last Grand Slam men's winner. So BG just emphasized it's been 20 years. So before I dive into our current cast of U.S. men's, Tell me, Brad, what is going on? Is there something going on or something wrong with American players, coaching, the whole system? What's going on there? Well, I think, for first of all, there's no birthright that says we have to win. <laughs> I mean, we've had an incredible, you know, from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even 90s, we had an incredible run. Most people say, I can't believe that Federer is not from Southern California. His game is like perfectly modeled after Sam. But who would ever think a country like Switzerland would have produced a player like that? Who would have thought a small country like Serbia would have produced a player like Djokovic? The game has become way more global. And I think that probably the biggest change now, why Europe has dominated tennis the last 20 years, is because I think that you need to be really good as a kid on clay. Because I think that clay develops your game. And I think that also in Europe, the, the contrast of playing on clay and playing on fast indoors, I think helps develop your game. Um, and I have been saying for at least the last 10 years, I would like to see a lot more clay tennis in the United States, especially at the junior level, because I think it helps you with your discipline and it helps you with your movement. Well, clay is kind of rare out here in America. Um what can we do besides sending our kids to Spain or, or overseas for half the year to train? Uh, I would, you know, listen, we have hard true in the States, which I think, you know, listen, isn't red clay, but I like hard true. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's a lot of kids that play on hard courts stick to hard courts. Mm. And then all of a sudden when they, you know, start to play a little bit on, oh, I haven't really played much on clay and to, they try to avoid it. So I think the more that you embrace playing a little bit on clay, if you have access to playing on clay, I think it helps your game. And the thing is, I just think it helps your discipline and helps your movement, which can grow your game essentially. So you're saying that it's not the coaching, it's not that Americans are soft. Uh, it's actually, I mean, clay's a little slower, therefore you have to set up the point a little better you you have to hit more shots because the ball is slower when it hits that clay. Therefore, we need to be more strategic as to what we do. Well, I also think the contrasting. Let take for take Federer. Grew up playing in Switzerland. They've got really fast indoors, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, then you get red clay. So you get the contrasting styles, and that's what a lot of the European players got. You know, the Czech players. Uh, you know, the Russian players. You play on fast indoors, you play on clay. And I just think those two contrasting styles are really good for building your game as a kid. I got you. So just seeing surfaces, playing on all different surfaces will make you a more rounded player. 
player. Yeah, it makes you make more adjustments in your game. Mm. You know, if you're playing on a quick, you know, really quick indoor courts, you're playing on a slow, thick outdoor. You got to learn to make adjustments in your game, which can broaden your game. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so let's let's take a look at 20 years later now. Um, we got a nice crop of, you know, players here. I'm going to show you this. I know them all. Okay, you know them all, so I don't, I don't need to show you. Okay, so on my list, we got Taylor Fritz as the top American right now. He is currently number 10. We got Tiafo at 11. Uh, Tommy Paul, Corda, Ben Shelton, right? Do we have a potential Grand Slam winner or number one here? Let's take uh, five years ago. We were not even in the equation. Fast forward five years now. Just after Australia, we had 11 guys in the top 50. So we have more guys in the top 50, more guys in the top 100. Last three slams, Taylor Fritz quarters of Wimbledon. He had a really good look to win that match against Rafa in the quarters. Um, se uh, semis for Tiafo at the Open, mm -hmm. and he was in a fifth set with Alcaraz. Mm -hmm. Semifinals for Tommy Paul at the Aussie Open. So three consecutive slams we are making moves in the right direction. And before this, the only active U.S. player to have made a semifinals is John Isner. So I feel like we're getting a lot closer. And the fact that we have so many players is a good thing. Sometimes when you have one or two, you mm -hmm. know, you don't push each other. So I do feel like we are getting a lot closer. One name you brought up, Dunn Shelton. Mm -hmm. Last year at this time, he was playing one for Florida, and he was ranked like 700. Twelve months later, he's 36 in the world. He's made huge strides. I think that he's got legitimate top 10 chances. Um, and I think the depth of our game right now, I think that if you had to ask me who's the most you know, advanced at the moment, I would tell you, tell you Taylor Fritz. Two months ago, no, less, a month ago, he was ranked five in the world. So mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, that's the first time we've had anybody in the top five, you know, since Roddick in 2009. So we're completely moving in the right direction. Heck, we can get a slam now where you have three or four Americans in the same quarter. Somebody's going to get to a semi. Um, okay. So I do feel like we are getting a lot closer. We're getting a lot more consistent. I cannot tell you concretely who is the guy that's going to be the next number one. Who is the guy that's going to win the next slam? Because... Everybody then will quote me. I will just say we are getting a heck of a lot closer. And I really thought actually at the open that Tiafo was right there. I was thinking, you know what, if he wins this fifth set, mm -hmm. he could easily win the open. And okay. I wouldn't have thought that 24 months ago, 36 months ago. So now, fast forward three months, if all of a sudden we're at Wimbledon. If you told me that Taylor Fritz or it's Tiafo or it's Shelton, somebody's going to make a deep run, I won't be surprised in the slightest. Okay. So originally I was going to, this topic was going to be, will Ben Shelton be the next American slam winner slash number one? Do you think he has the tools for that? I think that he has incredible, you know, couple of things to base his game around first of all he's got an incredible serve mm -hmm. he's a lefty which is very tricky big forehand and probably the, the the most exciting thing about Shelton at 6'4 195 mm -hmm. 20 years old is how well he moves so there's a lot to like about his game if you told me that in 12 months from now he was top 10 I'd say yeah exactly okay. that, that's it. so he's building completely in the right direction do, do I know if he can get to number one? I don't know that. Um, would I be surprised if he won a slam? Not in the slightest. Okay. Okay. But I can't give you a time frame. There, uh, there's a lot of guys that I use this word P, the potential. The potential is there. Whether or not you fulfill that is another story. You know, there's, it's not just about your skill set. It's how you manage those moments. How you manage being, you know, once you get, you know, Shelton was under the radar. He's not under the radar now. Mm -hmm. Now there's expectation. How do you manage that expectation? But his skill set, his athleticism, I will be shocked if he's not a top 10, top 5 player in the next 18 months. Right. No, I would agree with you. Like we, I mean, I grew up in the age, like you were saying, the 70s. We had a 
Magaro Connors. We had you. We constantly had the number one, a top American men's player um, in the Agassiz, in the Sampras. Well, so, yeah, the 90s, the last of me, Agassiz, Sampras, Chang, Courier, mm -hmm. Todd Martin. Right. You know, Mal Washington was an incredible one. Right. And then, actually, I mean, the early 2000s, you know, was Marty Fish, Roddick, Blake, Ginipri. Mm -hmm. I think right now, I'm not going to say we're going to be pushing the 90s, you know, but there's a really good chance this group, maybe we're going to have five different guys at some point reach top 10. Maybe we're going to have, a, you know, a couple, maybe two or three that are going to reach top five. Unfortunately, Jensen Brooksby is injured now, mm. who I like his game. And one guy we haven't brought up who's injured, unfortunately, as well, got to the quarters of the Aussie Open. I like a ton. I think he has top five potential is Sebastian Corda. Right. So we are loaded with different types of players. Nobody all play, plays the same way. So I feel like it's a really exciting time and there is opportunity. Now, how do you, you know, take advantage of that? Okay, so I'm going to make you make some, a bold prediction. Okay, in the next two to three years, will we have a American men's number one or Grand Slam champion? Next three years. Well, usually, <laughs> if you reach number one, you win a slam. Okay, not, not Wozniacki. Okay, yeah, but on the, on the men's side, I think it's actually only happened twice. Rios got to number one without winning a slam. And actually, in 93, Sampras got to number one. He had won a slam in 1990, but when he beat me in the finals of Tokyo in April of 93, he became one for the first time, but he didn't win a Wimbledon until uh, that year. Mm. But I think in the next two to three years, I think we win a slam. I okay. do. I don't know which one it will be. I think that, like, we keep making these pushes, quarter, semi, semi. Now the next evolution, somebody get into the final. But I will, I think, I'm hoping the next two, three years, we have an American win a slam. I don't know that we're, you know, a number one. Carlos Alcaraz mm. is a beast. Yes. Rune is a beast. Sinner is a beast. These And those two guys are two 19-year-olds and a 21-year-old. Not to mention, Joker is the youngest 35-year-old ever. Mm -hmm. So I do think we're getting a lot closer. I'm extremely hopeful. Five years ago, if you'd have asked me, mm, I'm not seeing anybody win. Right. I'm seeing that, you know, is a much... I'll, I'd probably be more surprised if we don't win one than if we, uh, than if we do. Okay. Words of wisdom by BG. We will hopefully have a number one man, men from the U.S. or a Grand Slam winner by then. BG says they go hand in hand. So hopefully we have well, both. Well, I think on the women's side, we're you know a lot closer. I'll be really surprised in the next 18 months if Coco Goff doesn't win a slam. But I do think that there's a lot to be excited about. That's for sure. Okay. Coming from the man himself, the last coach to coach. With hair. Yeah. <laughs> With hair. Um, the last American number one and Grand Slam winner, my man, Brad Gilbert. Thank you so much for joining thank me, you, BG. All right, guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Hey, coach. What's up, Barry? What you got there today? Oh, just wanted to try out the new whiteout and then obviously got my blackout with some new strings in there. So I want to test it out with you. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. All right. Um, what you got there, coach? Oh, well, I mean, if we're going to test out your rackets today, I thought we'd just test out my rackets today. What do you, what do you think? Sure, coach. If you want that perfect coach or partner who is a racket junkie just like you, Play Your Court is the place. They have over 27,000 players for you to choose from. It's all at playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin.